And so then the 132nd final is just moments away. Time for the elevated heart rate to kick in as these men make their way down to the start. For one, James Vine, the man in yellow, he's already said that he's achieved what he wanted to achieve. This man, Ryan Camille, had to be very strong at the end. He won the Bay Sheffield Novice in 2012 at 24 years of age. The one thing that we know is he's going to be the lure for everyone else in the field. Yeah, and the Easter Bunny at the moment as they're introduced to Hugh Delahunty, the president of the Stall Athletic Club, Scott Nee Haytner, Dennis Attackador and the other officials. The man in green, 24 years of age also, Tim Escherbach of Newcastle. Lifeguard and exercise side are so strong at the end in his semi-final. That could be a factor if there is to be an upset. I think you're right. He's going to be right in it. Of 9.5 metres, he can use that mark and put a lot of pressure on the other runners. James Vine, at 20 years of age, says that he's just delighted to get through to the final. He looks relaxed. He actually made them wait a little bit earlier when they were going down onto the blocks. Tassie is cheering for Andrew Robinson, the reigning Devonport gift champion. Well, he looked impressive. Three-time Tasmanian Athlete of the Year down there and looking to become the first Tasmanian for 72 years to win the gift. Aaron Stubbs, the 2009 winner, still at just 22 years of age. He doesn't lack confidence, and the same could be said for the man carrying red. At 21 years of age from the Gold, po uh, Gold Coast, Mitchell Williams Swain, the 2011 winner, says he's had a better preparation coming in here. And if that's the case, and after what we saw in the semi finals, he's certainly the man to beat. Remember back in 2011, Peter, that uh, Mitch Williams Swain was running for his mother who was suffering. Yep life-threatening illness at the time and she did pass away Karen six months after the game she's now got a daughter Ava his coach Brett Robinson a two-time finalist here he was second to Adrian Mott in 2006 and six to Josh Ross the year before but that loss to Mott one of those athletes two finals not a win but uh, coaching the favorite here and Mitch whose life's changed so much since 2011 I think it's a big advantage for Mitch Williams Swain and Aaron Stubbs that they've been there and done it. Today I was down there on the starting line and I was talking to Neil King, uh, a great athletics man, and he will tell you that in these moments he actually lost a store gift going back many, many years ago. It is as much about how you cope with this mentally as physically at this stage. The thing I like about Mitch Williams Swain and Aaron Stubbs is that they're both... They both produce their best runs of the weekend when they won. They're, they're confident guys. Some people don't like them because they're a bit arrogant and cocky, but you've got to have that if you want to be a good athlete. And off the track, they're lovely fellas. And we've got to know both of them quite well after their victories. And um, good luck to them here today and good luck to the others, of course. But that's they've got that, that inner strength to ignore all of this. You can see it when they were running down there. They looked like they wanted to win the race. They looked like they wanted to be the champion this year and get the $40,000. We talked about that cockiness. You have a look at the sprinters lining up for an Olympic final and try and pick out one who it doesn't look cocky. That's a part of the modus operandi of the sprinter. You have to have that confidence. Two men perhaps will have it above the other four here. So Mitchell, William Swain and Aaron Stubbs with the opportunity of joining the great Bill Howard who won in 1966 and 1967. Barry Foley who won two years apart in 70 and 72. Josh Ross, who won two years apart in 2003 and 2005. That famous old scoreboard hasn't changed much over the years. The prize money has changed. They run for $40,000. At one stage, a pig was part of the prize for winning the store gift many, many years ago after W.J. Millard was the first man to do it. To about two minutes before, mate, so it's probably about a minute now. And so they're going to have a little bit of time to think about it, and it'll be interesting to read the minds of these runners. Now, look at James Vine. He's getting up there, and the starter, Murray McPherson, has told him, just don't go too far down. But this was something that he did. He showed a bit of composure beyond his years before the semi-final, and actually made the others wait, and he's, he's testing Murray out there. He just jogs 10 metres along the track. Morris Campbell, the starter, and, well... If he is feeling the heat of the situation, James Vine, he's not displaying it. It's a great atmosphere here, and the, the thing I like about the atmosphere is the silence. It's a history-making moment. Someone's going to write their name into the books. They go into the Hall of Fame. They get a plaque up in the main street. They're known forever as the winner of the gift. 
Tim Escherbach, a 24-year-old from Newcastle in green. All the best. All the best, Aaron. Thanks, dude. All the best, mate. They probably won't hear the these instructions. But All the best. Morris the best. will issue them anyway. Now, runners, you'll be told to walk to your blocks. Do not get on till I give you the command, and when I call you to the set, I'm going to hold till everyone is firmly set. Now, I'm going to be severe in, on any movement in the set position. If you're unsteady, put up your hand. A place in history awaits. This is the 132nd running of the Australia Post store gift. William Swain in red, Stubbs in white, attempting a second break of glory. Only sound you can hear now are the hearts beating a bit quicker. Set! And there is a break, and I fear it might be the red. I think you might be right. He looked a bit edgy. He looked like he went, and all of a sudden, everything has changed. And the red, Mitch Williams Swain, the red hot favourite, right, has please, broken mate. here. And we'll go back a metre. Well, well. Not much doubt. He's the man to move. And Morris Campbell has already told them that he will be severe. So he goes back to 3.5 now. Is that going to dent his chances? It means that he is giving Aaron Stubbs now almost two metre start when before it was almost one. And I wonder what that has meant to the psyche of the other runners as well, knowing that Mitch might have to sit back in the blocks a bit. Maybe it brings them into calculation. Aaron Stubbs. Big time. Escher back. Stubbs, Robinson, right in it. It was an Nine. open final apart from Mitch William Swain. Now it's become even more open. He's got to shut that down now. He's got to... So you can see he's just... Up on Tapping the in the point, pegs, right. lining them up. All of that was set before. Now he's got to do it again. He's got to put it all over his head if he can. He's got to rely on the fact that he was he was probably going to win by two two meters. I reckon he had that much up his sleeve, but he's got to concentrate on all that again. Forget about it. Not worry about it. I'm not sure if any of that's possible to be honest, but that's what he has to do here. The victory is still possible, but it's incrementally oh, harder now for the 2011 winner. He goes back to 3.5 metres. Will that boy the spirits of his competitors? Aaron Stubbs jumps over the blocks. And in a bit over 12 seconds, he might be jumping for joy. The final of 2013 at Central Park. Away, William Swain began okay. Stubbs got a good start. Camille giving them plenty to chase. The Blue Robinson finishing off hard. William Swain is flying home with Stubbs. It's going to be a blanket finish, and the Blues got there. It's Tassie's day. Andrew Robinson has caused an upset and becomes the stall gift champion of 2013. Wow, what a finish. It was anyone's race with about 30 metres to go. And Robinson has just pulled the line towards him. And his coach, Ray Quarrell, a legendary figure in Tasmanian athletics. He lost his house in the Christmas fires, lost everything. Lost almost everything to do with the Tasmanian um, pro running scene, all of the memorabilia that he had. They've come here, they've wanted to do it. And that is a great upset, but a great result for Andrew Robinson from Tasmania. I didn't know where to look with about 30 metres to go. Camille gave them plenty to chase. At this stage, Robinson was carting the two other Stubbs and William Swain up. Looked as though the red might just be able to overtake them. How big is that metre now that he was penalised on the line? That has cost him a store gift victory. No question about that, but you have to hand it to Andrew Robinson. We talked about his finish, the quality of his finish after the semi-finals. It was an absolutely superb last 10 metres from Andrew Robinson. 
where do you look? You don't know. And Mitch Williams, well, he's going to carry that to his grave because he should have been in the history books as a two-time winner. Instead, it goes to Tasmania for the first time in over 70 years. Rob Waters, the last win for Tassie was in 1941. It's Tassie's day with Andrew Robinson. Well, how about that? 1941, Andrew, was the last time a Tasmanian won the store gift and you've broken the drought. Oh, my God. One must for words, mate. I mean, I knew I was in good shape coming here, but to, to win the thing, I mean, oh, we didn't... I mean, we knew I was a good chance to make the final, but to win this, I mean, my life's changed. I can't... Oh, one must for words. Well, that's what they say. When you win the store gift, your life has changed forever, but... Look, there's a lot of drama surrounding your lead-in here. Of course, your, your coach, Ray's had all those problems with those horrible bushfires uh, at Dunalley. And, and look, you've, uh, it must have been difficult for him, but, uh, gee, you can celebrate now. Yeah, mate, I mean, that was a tough couple of weeks for us, but, I mean, a bit of adversity, you know, we've used that as motivation. We've really, really worked since then. And, I mean, I love Ray. He's like a second dad to me, so, I mean, this is for him, really, and for, you know, the Tassie athletic community. And how long have you and Ray been a team? This is our second year together and we've accomplished quite a lot in that time, so, oh, yeah, we didn't think to do it this quick, but uh, it was definitely on the agenda. And what about after the false start? What was going through your mind when, when Mitch broke? I might get up now. Uh, <laughs> Did it give you confidence? Definitely. I mean, I thought I would have been right in there and, I mean, Mitch is such a great runner, you can't, can't count him off. I mean, he's won here before, so he knows what it takes, but I just really wanted to know my start and just... I knew that Stubbs in him would get to me with about 30 to go, so just kick like a mule and finish it off. And kick not like a mule you did. Tell us about the psyche at the start before such a big event like this with so much on the line. What's going through your mind? Well, for me, it was just about executing. I mean, I just put, put everything else to the side and I just really wanted to run my own race, enjoy the experience and... Uh, Wow, what experience it's been. Absolutely, and uh, what about all your fans back in Tassie? They'll be absolutely wrapped. The place will be rocking, I tell you what. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting back home and we'll have a big party for sure. And what about the celebrations here in store tonight? Big one, mate, that's for sure. <laughs> There'll be a few drinks and uh, a bit of reminiscing on the hard work that's gone into winning this one. Well, I've no doubt you've been working uh, so hard uh, for so long. Uh, congratulations, wonderful performance. Hey, you've won the stall gift. Yeah, thank you very much, mate. Oh. A dream come true. Andrew Robinson there, the Australia Post 2013 stall gift winner.